So I'd like to thank you once again for coming here today, especially uh, during what is uh, the beginning of a holiday week. One of the many joys for me of being in Armenia is that so many Armenians have opened up their homes and their hearts to me, enriching my experience beyond measure and increasing my understanding of Armenia's rich culture and unique people. Although I'm thousands of miles away now from Yerevan, I'm delighted to see that same generosity of, of, of spirit exists here in the United States among the Armenian American community. I thought that today I would make remarks and then leave time for questions and answers. As some of you know, I've been in Boston, New York, then in LA, and this is my last stop. And the reason I made this the last stop is that I wanted to share with policymakers uh, what I've heard along the way, because I know many of you have questions, many of you have concerns. Afterwards, I hope we'll have a chance to meet in person as well. I'd like to report to you how we view current events in Armenia, the status of the bilateral relationship, our goals in Armenia, and how we are using our assistance money to help improve the lives of the Armenian people. And for those of you who are interested in helping Armenia, and I'm sure that is probably 99% of you, and I know that so many of you are already involved in important ways. I'd also like to uh, not only hear about what you're doing in Armenia, I'd like to share with you some ideas about perhaps other ways that you might be involved. U.S. strategic interests in Armenia are straightforward. Helping Armenia develop democratically, advance economically, and establish a sovereign state that is strong and secure. We believe that these goals benefit the Armenian people. We also believe that they benefit the American people because a state that is democratic, prosperous, secure, and at peace with its neighbors generally makes a better partner for the United States. Over the years, the U.S.-Armenia relationship has been based on the shared belief that market economy and democracy, while imperfect systems, are still better than the alternatives. When Armenia, a nation of traders, broke free of communist restraints, its skilled entre entrepreneurs quickly emerged to form the basis of a market economy, and the government established the framework to support that economy. Politically, sovereign Armenia, built on the Armenian independence movement of the late 1980s, that sparked the downfall of the Soviet empire and vastly expanded the basic human rights and liberties afforded to all Armenian citizens. In all these areas, the US has consistently supported Armenia and provided approximately $1.8 billion in total assistance. So where has Armenia's political evolution taken it? The past 18 years have brought many advances, but naturally challenges remain as well and I'll focus on, on elections. Last year's flawed presidential elections and the subsequent March 1 violence that ended in the deaths of at least 10 individuals continue to reverberate, and I'm sure many of you have been concerned uh, about those developments. Recently, however, um, we've um, received some positive news in that the Armenian parliament voted on an amnesty. The US government welcomes that, uh, and the release of the former foreign minister two parliamentarians, as well as a number of opposition supporters. And we look forward to additional releases as the um, implementation of this general amnesty uh, moves forward. And we look forward to addition, um, further steps to ease the lingering tensions and open the way for constructive dialogue. Unfortunately, widespread and systemic fraud and intimidation also marked the recent May 31 Yerevan mayoral elections, and some of you may have uh, followed uh, the reports of that. In the precinct, for example, where I observed the vote count, two parties approached the chairman to get him to change the tally after the vote was counted. He refused, noting that there was nothing he could do because observers were present. And so on the one hand, that's really positive news because the chairman did his job and did not change the vote count. On the other hand, there, there clearly was an expectation that the vote count could be changed. And, um, and we did observe that in a number of other precincts as well. There were some positives in this election. Previously, the mayor was an appointed position. Now that, that position is elected, and that's a, that's a good thing. During the election period, we also noted an improved media climate and greater freedom of assembly. 
and President Sarkisian has publicly stated that there needs to be an investigation into the irregularities, and that is happening. We understand, as I'm sure everybody in this room understands, that the, that the path to democracy is rarely swift or smooth. Our aim is to help the Armenian government and people restore momentum to their democratization efforts and renew their own aspirations of accountable government institutions and rule of law. I am confident that this can be achieved, particularly when the opposition and the government work together constructively. It's our firm belief that Armenian issues require Armenian solutions, consistent not only with democratic principles, but also with Armenian culture, Armenian tradition, and Armenian history. However, we also think that the US government can provide support in this process. Our focus is on bolstering democratic institutions at the national level, empowering civil society, and promoting political participation of fully informed citizens. You don't have to talk to too many people in Armenia, and I'm sure many of you have, to know there is a demand for accountability and transparency in government, just as there is here in our own country. Through our targeted assistance programs, we are strengthening both the public's capacity to articulate that demand and the government's ability to meet it. Our assistance dollars, and that means your assistance dollars, support fiscal management and capacity development to 38 municipalities, enabling them to provide services to generate revenues for the community. Our efforts to fight corruption include 11 newly opened advocacy centers throughout Armenia. Over 1,000 individuals to date have contacted the centers for help and legal assistance, and several cases are moving through the courts. And I think that's significant because the, the first of these uh, advocacy centers was opened just in December. So you can see there really is a demand for this kind of legal assistance. Our support for independent media and enhanced access to the internet is helping to create a better informed citizenry. And after a considerable pause, leaders in parliament have invited us to work with them to strengthen the capacity of their working committees. We are building institutional capacity in Armenia's defense bar, procuracy, and judiciary. We're also helping to increase law enforcement capacity so the justice system can impartially and effectively enforce the law in accordance with international standards and human rights conventions. That's important for democratic development. It's also important for economic development. Like every other country in the world, including our own, Armenia faces great economic challenges right now. After six consecutive years of double-digit growth, 2008 saw Armenia's GDP grow relatively modest, 6.8%. And uh, two weeks ago, there were new figures um, that were released um, that show that the Armenian economy has contracted 15.7% in the first uh, five months of this year. Most alarming to me personally is that the World Bank recently estimated that as a result of the crisis, Armenia's poverty rate may increase from 23% to 28% by 2010. And when I travel in the regions, I can see the impact, and I'll just give you a, a few examples. In Goris, officials told us that the demand in stores has dropped by 50%. In Sisian, no bank has provided a single loan since January. And everywhere, you can see unemployed young men sort of hanging out on street corners because they don't have jobs. In response to the economic crisis, the Armenian government has borrowed approximately $1.5 billion from the World Bank, IMF, and Asian Development Bank. Those funds will be used for a range of initiatives, including budget support, building rural roads and canals, and housing for earthquake victims, and to support loans for small and medium enterprises. As the largest donor to the three international financial institutions, the US has supported Armenia's loan requests and will continue to support those loan requests to meet Armenia's needs. The economic crisis is not attributable entirely to external factors. And in countering its effects, the Armenian government has an opportunity to undertake fundamental reforms to promote long-term economic